joining me via Skype in Stockholm is Glenn Hodgson, the founder and CEO of Free Trade Europa, a think tank focused on European policy. Glenn, we typically speak on Skype, so unlike some of my other contributors, this doesn't uh, feel strange. But what's going on, Glenn? The death toll is rising, yet uh, yeah. your designated uh, prime minister is um, unchanged. What's going on? Yeah, I know we, we, we're going through the, uh, the different process here in uh, Sweden to most of the rest of the world. Um, we, of course, seeing the, uh, the, the, the impacts, of course, Sweden has got a very different uh, view to this, keeping the sick and elderly people uh, isolated. Um, and I think this is the right strategy as well. We see, sort of, for example, a country like Poland, which locked down very early, uh, 10th of uh, March, um, closed its borders. The curve in terms of infections and deaths is actually very, very similar. And, uh, you know, we're also seeing these lockdowns causing other problems as well. Mental health issues, depression. In the UK, for example, you over there can't even uh, uh, have a drink and feeling stigmatised, having a, uh, an aperitif during a Zoom or Skype call with friends and family. And of course, this is wrong. Moderation is crucial, but having a small tipple doesn't really pose a problem for the mass majority of the population. And you know, even we're seeing that studies saying that it actually helps older people as well. So we need a sense of proportion in what's actually happening here at the moment. It's interesting you say that, Glenn, and... Um... You know, rightly or wrongly, there are, I would say, some people that would definitely uh, agree with you. I suppose, especially if you're a small uh, business owner or if you're in the service industry and you know, yeah. as well as I do, that uh, Britain yeah. really relies on its services. But um, the, the professionals in uh, Sweden don't agree with you because over two and a half thousand of them have signed uh, this petition asking uh, the government and the health ministry to start taking this seriously. Seriously, can you understand why some people are saying, you know, stay indoors, close your doors? I understand where it's actually sort of coming from. I think a lot of it is actually sort of down to, you know, health practitioners that, that they have different views. They're not everyone's right, not everyone's wrong, but it's, it, it goes down to views at the end of the day. And we don't know where this is actually going. There's also a lot of, uh, uh, of um, bullying as well. We saw President Trump last night, the Chinese and other European countries actually trying to to force Sweden to uh, follow the line. Half of it to make themselves seem, seem, uh, seem good and actually taking the right approach. But I think a lot of the sort of the, uh, the, the media, even the World Health Organization is losing a bit of credibility because you know where it should be offering sober and trustworthy facts and figures, instead it's kind of scaremongering and these shock tactics to make sure that it's head of the headlines every day look through any social media feed, look in the media, it's all these doom and gloom and terrible Armageddon stories that you see all over the place. And I think that sort of the uh, public health authority in, here in Sweden are actually doing a very good, very sober, very balanced approach. What are we looking at in terms of the, the, the deaths uh, and the infections? And the fact that, you know, if we don't deal with, deal with this properly uh, now, the second wave, if we don't have immunity, will be even worse. So I think it's a very good approach that's actually been taken at the moment here. What's it like on the ground? When you're on the ground, of course, it's different. I was reading some polls uh, yesterday and it seems to show that fear is creeping in. Of course, it's all over the telly, isn't it? Um, but, you yeah. know, before there were many like you in Sweden that thought the government were doing a great job, but now they're starting to lose the confidence. Are you, are you getting that? What about your staff? Are they able to work from home if they wanted? Yeah, they are able to, to work from home. And also, you know, we're, we're doing the sort of the self-isolation. We're not having meetings. We're having sort of uh, video calls instead of actually physical meetings. Social distancing is happening. Um, and of course, we're seeing it, hotel, restaurants, despite what's actually happened, you know, business is, is really down. People are actually staying away. People are scared uh, and it's having massive impacts. Of course, uh, Sweden as well, being a sort of a, a small country, export orientated economy as well, um, is, is reliant on global supply chains. If it, things aren't coming, things aren't happening from other uh, parts of the world, We've got issues and, of course, uh, things start uh, uh, breaking down. Blockages occur and, and business does not uh, uh, happen as normal. You know, like a lot of businesses, we're feeling the effects of this and it's uh, you know, large companies, but also small and medium sized enterprises who are really feeling the effects at the moment of the, uh, 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 of the global panic and the global, uh, uh, and the global chaos. And I think that, you know, honestly, 
the uh, the economic effect of this uh, virus will be felt and be more and uh, serious, more widespread than the actual virus itself. Uh, lastly, and very quickly, we're running out of time, Glenn, but um, do you think there will be changes over the weekend? You know, you said it yourself, even uh, the leader of the free world, Donald Trump, has, uh, uh, you know, set his sights mm. on Sweden. Do you think you'll be backed into a corner? I think there's a risk of that. I mean, the, the government has new powers to be able to take more uh, extreme measures. But honestly, I think we won't see the, the lockdown that we've been seeing in other parts of uh, Europe and other parts of the world. Uh, I think that schools will uh, uh, remain open after the Easter holiday, uh, which we're on at the moment here. Uh, and I think that we will see um, you know, a gradual lifting uh, of uh, restrictions in other parts of the world. And I think this will, will, uh, this will be something that will fall into line with the Swedish approach as well. Thank you.